Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over the Doppler effect. So let's get started. We're going to start by looking at the definition of the Doppler effect. It says here that the Doppler effect is the change in frequency observed when a source of sound or light waves moves relative to an observer. And another way of saying that is the change in wavelength, because we should know that a changing frequency is going to cause a change in wavelength as well. And you've probably already experienced the Doppler effect many times before. For example, when a police car, an ambulance or a fire engine drives past you, a change in pitch of the siren is heard when the vehicle approaches and then passes you. The same thing is heard by Formula 1 spectators. And just to demonstrate what I mean, I'm going to show you a quick animation. So imagine you're a stationary observer standing on a platform and a train is approaching you and the train is going to pass you. You would hear something like this. So hopefully you heard the change in pitch there when the train was passing the stationary observer. And that change in pitch is caused by a change in frequency or a change in the wavelength of the waves that are approaching and then leaving the observer. So looking back at the notes now, what is actually happening? Well, imagine you're the stationary observer standing over here and an ambulance is approaching you. Then what happens is you would hear a higher pitch in the sound waves that are approaching you when the ambulance moves towards you. Whereas once the ambulance has then passed you, you would hear a lower pitch due to a lower frequency in the waves that are coming from behind the moving sound source. So it's all to do with the separation of these wave fronts, which we'll talk about later. It says here that we will consider two cases. So we'll look at when a source of sound waves moves towards a stationary observer at a constant speed Vs, and when a source of sound waves moves away from a stationary observer at a constant speed of Vs. So for the first one, source moving towards the observer, it says here that when the source of sound waves is moving towards the observer, more sound waves are received per second, i.e. the waves bunch up, so the frequency heard by the observer is increased. And just to demonstrate what I mean by this, I'm going to show you another animation. So let's say this is my source of sound waves over here, the red dot, and as I move the source of sound waves towards the stationary observer, we're going to look at what happens to the wave fronts here. So remember these wave fronts represent waves, and you might remember from National 5 Physics when we did diffraction, that the distance between these wave fronts is actually the wavelength of the waves. So we're going to move the source of sound waves slowly towards the observer and look at what happens to the wave fronts. And if I then pause it there, you should be able to see that all of the wave fronts moving in front of the source have actually bunched up. So you'll notice that the wavelength between these waves is much shorter than the wavelength of the waves behind the source of sound waves. So that means that this observer here will actually experience more wave fronts or more waves each second. So they will hear more sound waves each second, which means that they will hear a higher frequency because remember frequency is just the number of waves per second. So for sound waves moving towards a stationary observer, the waves will bunch up, more waves will be heard each second, and so there will be a higher frequency observed. So going back to the notes now, it says here that the frequency heard by the observer, which is given the symbol F subscript O, is greater than the frequency of the source, which is given the symbol F subscript S. So we have an equation for this, which is FO equals FS times V over V minus VS, where V is our speed of the sound waves and VS is the speed of the source. It then says to note that the sign in the denominator is negative, and we'll see why we're noting this in a moment. The next one to look at is the source moving away from the observer. So we've looked at a source moving towards an observer, and now we're looking at a source moving away from the observer. It says here that when the source of sound waves is moving away from the observer, fewer sound waves are received per second. The waves spread out, so the frequency heard by the observer is decreased. Now if we go back to the animation so that I can show you this one. Now if I play our animation and move the source of sound waves to the left, this time away from the observer, then you'll notice that the waves on the left this time are bunching up, but because the source is now moving to the left away from the observer, the waves are spreading out behind the source of sound waves. So the stationary observer now will receive fewer wave fronts each second. So a smaller number of waves per second means a smaller frequency. So they will hear a smaller frequency in the sound after the source of sound waves has moved past. So that is why when you hear a siren moving towards you, the sound will get louder and you'll also hear a higher frequency in the pitch. But then as the siren moves past you, you'll hear a big dip in the frequency and that is due to the Doppler effect. And just remember that this space between the wavefronts here is the wavelength. So we've got a bigger wavelength here, which means a smaller frequency. Whereas for the 
source moving towards the observer, we had a smaller wavelength, so a higher frequency. So going back to the notes, it says that the frequency heard by the observer, FO, is less than the frequency of the source, FS. So we have this equation for this one, which is FO equals FS times V over V plus VS. Now notice that this is almost exactly the same as this equation here. The only thing that's different is the sign in the denominator. So it says that the sign in the denominator is positive here. So we need to be aware of the two cases for an object moving either towards an observer or away from an observer and the fact that they have slightly different equations. So just as a wee summary, it says that the shifts in wavelength are shown below. So for a source moving towards the observer, the waves will bunch up, which means they have a shorter wavelength and therefore a higher frequency is observed. Whereas if the source is moving away from the observer, the waves spread out behind the source and these waves will have a longer wavelength and therefore a lower frequency. So a lower frequency will be observed. And here's our summary of the equations. So the following equation contains the two different cases, but you need to decide on the correct sign to use in the denominator based on the question. So we've got FO equals FS times V over V plus or minus VS. This is the equation that you'll get on the relationship sheet in the exam. So you need to work out, first of all, whether the question's asking you about a source moving towards an observer or away from an observer, and therefore whether you're going to use a plus or a minus. And in this equation, we've got FO is the frequency heard by the observer measured in Hertz. FS is the frequency of the sound source measured in Hertz. V is the speed of the sound waves in air measured in meters per second and Vs is the speed of the source measured in meters per second. So the speed of the sound waves in air, that's going to be 340 meters per second. Now note that Doppler effects can also be done for light. So if you were using light, you would use the speed of light for V rather than the speed of sound. But most often for this equation, you'll be using the speed of sound, which is 340 meters per second for V. And how might you remember which one is positive and which one is negative? Well, here's a funny way to remember it. So imagine an ambulance is coming towards you. Then you could think about that as being a negative thing because that suggests that you maybe need an ambulance if you're injured, an ambulance coming towards you, and that's a negative thing. So that means you would have a negative in your denominator. Whereas if an ambulance is moving away from you, that's a good thing because it suggests you don't need an ambulance and you're not injured. So that would be a positive thing. So that would be a positive sign in the denominator instead. So if that's going to help you remember it, then great. If not, you can maybe come up with your own way of remembering it. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.